Assalamu alaikum and welcome to everyone. This video is about my experiences with uh, learning from the scholars in Kuwait. So these days, uh, it just seems so many people on the internet are taking their knowledge from, you know, Bakr and Zaid, as they say, you know, any Tom, Dick and Harry uh, that's super famous and has a lot of followers on YouTube. The idea being that this guy is super popular, so he must have knowledge. When people talk with confidence, um, it gives the impression that they know what they're talking about. Now, I know for a fact, professionally working over the years, that there are numerous people that when they know how to talk, they only need a little bit of information to give the impression that they know a lot. Believe me, I know this from experience. I'm the sort of person, I don't like to talk on a subject unless I'm very comfortable talking about it, and that means I've, I've studied it at some depth. Whereas there are a lot, a lot of people that's not the case. You can literally give them a few keywords and they can talk about it as if they know it. They've been studying it for years. But they can only do that with people that they themselves are not experts in something. So we have to be really careful who and where we take our knowledge from. Now what I'm about to tell you, uh, re with regards to my experiences recently in Kuwait at least, um, I'm not telling you this because I want to say, look at what I'm doing, I'm so smart, I'm a student of knowledge or anything like this. No, I'm literally doing it just to share with people who maybe are in the UK, they've never travelled abroad and studied uh, to seek knowledge or something like that, how it is here in Kuwait. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help me to correct my intention and in that I'm just doing this purely for his sake uh, and to help uh, to provide benefit to the people. So I'll talk about um, a few of the recent instances uh, where I've sat with scholars. The scholar I mostly sit with at the moment is Sheikh Muhammad Hisham Tahiri Abu Salah Hafidh Allah Ta'ala and he uh, he is the Imam al Khatib in the masjid, which is the biggest masjid closest to my house, alhamdulillah. Um, Sheikh Muhammad Hisham Tahiri, I mean, you can look him up online, he's from Afghanistan, um, and he is, subhanAllah, the way that he acts, he's very calm, very respectful, he practices the sunnah uh, in everything that he does. There was a video of him during Fajr, uh, and there was an earthquake in Kuwait. And just look at the way he reacted, Hafidhullah, just look at the way he reacted in that video. SubhanAllah, you can tell, you know, when calamities or, or, or extreme situations strike, the way people react, SubhanAllah, you can see that this tells you something about the, what they've been doing in their everyday, li everyday lives, how they practice the religion or not, as the case may be. It's sitting with Sheikh Hisham, you know, learning from him. Um, like yesterday, we were sat with him for, for a couple of lectures and the Sheikh knows the material like the back of his hand inside out. Um, and, and his behavior is just, impeccable, very calm, he doesn't scream, he doesn't shout. The only time he raises his voice is during the khutbah in Jum'ah and this is, you know, the khutbah is supposed to be an admonition for the people, you know, because the people that come on Jum'ah, they don't necessarily come to the masjid all the time, Lil Asif, unfortunately. So, you know, it's there to admonish the people, to remind them. So this is this is normal on, on a Friday, but within limits. After the durus, the sheikh will open for Q&A and he'll take questions. He has uh, like a special majlis for fiqh, which is People can ask questions and, and you know, he'll answer their questions. You can even, uh, before and after the salawat, the, if the imam is there, because there are several uh, imams for the masjid, but if, if Sheikh Hisham is there, you can go up to him anytime and ask him a question and he'll answer your question. And whenever you go up and ask him a question, he smiles and answers your question and he'll tell you, Qala Allah, Qala Rasul. This is a, a sifat and a characteristic of the people of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. Like they will tell you, Qala Allah, Qala Rasul, SubhanAllah. And when I say Qur'an and Sunnah, I mean they have memorized the Qur'an and many, many ahadith. So when the ulama are talking, you see them referencing the Qur'an. And it's very natural for them. You know, it's something, something easy. It's part of their, you know, their heart. SubhanAllah. It's, it, you know, um, this, these are the kind of things that amaze me because I don't have them. And I see them in the, in the shiuch when I'm sitting in front of them. So you'll be like, SubhanAllah, he's not even looking at the book he's reading. He's just telling you something for a fawaid or a fa'ida from his mind you know and in the quran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this and the tafsir of it in tabari is this and the tafsir um, from this perspective is this written by this person ibn taymiyyah said this ibn al-qayyim said that and this hadith is in muatta this hadith is in al-bukhari this hadith is in uh, you know some uh, other book which i've never heard of and he relates it. you go and check and sure enough there it is subhanallah i mean they have a very deep knowledge it's not just like you go and memorize 40 hadith, you know, which in and of itself is, is, is a feat, you know, it takes a lot of effort. You know, go and memorize 40 hadith and then khalas your scholar. You know, no, it doesn't work like this. It doesn't work like this. And the way you get this uh, humility 
is by sitting with the scholars because you realize even if you have memorized 40 hadith you know that without the understanding of it the akhlaq that goes with it and the, the knowledge applying the knowledge that is in those hadith themselves to your life and the way you behave with your family and other people you know it's it's worthless without the action that comes with the, with the knowledge uh, and the knowledge that they have is 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 so much deeper than the knowledge of the everyday person even if that person is a youtuber with you know two million subscribers and so many people became muslim because of him subhanallah and we have to understand what are the criteria for establishing uh, should i take knowledge from someone you know these criteria are all in the quran and the sunnah and people can, can explain it to you are the people of dhikr you need to go and ask the people of knowledge um, other scholars I've studied with here in Kuwait um, again this is not for me to say I'm any kind of student of knowledge because I'm not a very low level uh, person you know who's just just lucky enough to be in Kuwait alhamdulillah trying my best uh, is Sheikh Salim al-Tawil Hafidhullah ta'ala uh, Abu Sa'ad I mean again uh, same thing whenever you ask the Sheikh a question He's always available for you. None of these scholars charge anything. They never ask for money. They're just there and they work tirelessly. SubhanAllah, day and night, I've seen the schedule of, of, of these uh, shiuch in Kuwait. They, they're literally constantly giving lectures um, or studying or writing books. Uh, everything they do, SubhanAllah, is just for the, for the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then recently we had Sheikh Ruhayli and Sheikh Suhaimi. Afidahuma Allah wa ta'ala just to sit in the presence of, of, of the shiuch and to see the way they react you know you can watch them on YouTube but it's not the same when you sit with them you see their mannerisms you get to to see how they react to particular questions the expressions on their faces the smiles the you know the, the body language and the akhlaq you know subhanallah but this is why um, when you hear people you know using horrible terms to describe the scholars you know, me knowing my level and sitting in front of a sheikh like Hamdi Sham Tahiri, Sheikh Saib Tawil, um, Sheikh Suleiman al you know, I'm nothing, nothing, nothing because these guys, Hafidhum Allah, have just dedicated their lives to start, like really dedicated their lives. They, they read, they memorize constantly, they write constantly, you know, and uh, yeah, I can't, I can't compare myself to them. So when I see someone who's maybe, you know, studied a little bit more than me, there's no right for that person to, to say anything against the scholars. There's just no comparison. So anyway, these are just some of my reflections on uh, my experiences recently here in Kuwait. Yeah, I, I just, they're there to serve us with, with their knowledge, but they got that knowledge through sheer hard work and effort. Um, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only blesses a few people with the ability to, to get this understanding, this knowledge in the religion. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us that those who he loves, he gives them understanding in the religion. Faqihi fi din. SubhanAllah. So we need to understand that the, that the scholars have been given this understanding through pure hard work and by the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we have to have a, a certain, you know, we have to have the consummate respect for the scholars. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. If I made any mistakes in this video, I sincerely apologize. Uh, this is from me. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us and unite us upon uh, the correct understanding of the Quran and Sunnah. And make us of those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves and gives fiqh in the religion. Jazakumullah khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.